friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Rai and this is Rai's Reading Corner. And today I am bringing you my massive July book wrap up. So July was a crazy month for me. Um, I read an insane amount of books. I don't even know how I possibly did it. So quickly, I did participate in three read readathons this month. I participated in the Popsy Culture Readathon, Horror in 24, and also the Reading Rush. I also did my TBR Bingo, which I did all of the books and prompts I needed for that one. I will post my TBR Bingo for August down below. And side note, this is day two of VEDA, and I will post my announcement video for VEDA and all the amazing people that are doing VEDA. But you guys came here to see what I read for this month. So, drum roll please. I read a total of book of 26 books this month. I don't know how I did it. I'm still like, I don't even know. But I won't lie, I'm really proud of myself. 26 books, that is ridiculous. I've never read that many books in a month and only two of them were audiobooks and it was actually the first time I've really ever did audiobooks. This month was like a big deal for me and the books I read were great books. So I had a total of two and a half stars books, total of four three star books. I had a total of three four star books and I had a total of 17 five star books which like I never give that many five stars out. That's just how good this month was. And I apologize for this lovely empty bookcase here. I just literally took down so many books. So I figured what we will do is I'll start with my lowest rated books and build up to my five star books. I will try to go through this as quickly as possible. So a lot of these books I read in vlogs. So I kind of already talked about them. Plus it's 26 books. That's a lot of books to go over. So let's start with my two and a half star books first. So my first two and a half star was Stephen King, The Mist. This is one of his like novella type books. This is about a small town in Vermont, or no, Maine, a small town in Maine that has like this mist that comes after a storm. Um, at first they think it's just like a normal mist, but you know, it's Stephen King's world. It's definitely not normal. And it, once it comes and gets you, it kills you pretty much. Um, so this is the story of um, a really pretty much focused on a husband or a father and a son and their try to survival through like a grocery store. I, there were things I liked about this, but some of the choices I feel like in this book were so unnecessary and it just made me really, really angry reading this book and it had nothing to do to add to the plot. It just made me so mad. If you've read this book, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about because while I was going through other Goodreads um, reviews, they said the exact same thing that that part of the plot was completely unnecessary and aggravating. And insensitive and just terrible. So two and a half stars, Stephen King, The Mist. My next two and a half star, which I was really disappointed about because I really had high hopes for it, was The Silver Lining Playbooks by Matthew Quick. So um, this was uh, one of my favorite movies actually, but I was so disappointed through this book. I felt that it was very, very slow and I felt like the first half of the book was really disconnected and disjointed from the second half of the book. So um, if you're not familiar with this story, uh, is about a man named Pat who um, experienced like a traumatic event with his wife. He caught her cheating um, on him and he goes into a mental institution. He's there for several years and comes back and still thinks that his wife is going to be in love with him, that he's waiting for him. So this is his story of him um, outside of the mental institution trying to adapt to life again and trying to kind of like win his wife back. But it's more complex than that. He meets a girl named Tiffany who kind of um, tries to help him through there. There's some like dance stuff, like they participate in a dance competition, which in the movie that was like such a big part but in this book, it's really not, I feel like. Um, that's a, their family is um, a huge Philadelphia Eagles fan. Um, and it's a lot about football too, which was, this was more football, I feel like, centered versus the movie. I personally liked the movie better. I know, I don't know if that's a popular opinion or not. Um, and I usually am not someone that likes the movie better than the book, but I did not care for this. And so I only give it two and a half stars. So next we're going to go over my, th uh, three star books that I read this month. And so a three star for me is not a bad review, like a bad score at all. It's just that I didn't like love the book, but I didn't dislike the book. So the first one is a middle grade book that I read for a prompt for one of my readathons and it was Goosebumps Welcome to the Dead House. 
So this was like going down memory lane. Um, and they are really still kind of creepy. Like I, these scared me as a child and I see, like, I see why, like it literally is about dead children and dead people living in your house and trying to kill you to join them too. Like that's weird. And the dog dies. I hate when animals die in books. It makes me so sad and angry. Okay, I'm done now. But the, yeah, I, I understand why this was creepy, why it terrorized me as a child. I totally get it. It is very bizarre and creepy. So I did give it three stars. Like, I mean, it, I feel like it's hard to give a middle grade that's such a simple book. Like this is, it doesn't tackle like a complex issue or like it's not, you know, it's, it's just a good, enjoyable read and a creepy read. So I gave it three stars. So the next book completely took me by surprise. This was for a prompt where I had to read a random book um, and I literally closed my eyes at a bookstore and picked a book. I was really hesitant about reading it, but I actually really enjoyed it. And it was called Adorkable by Cookie O. Gorman. I gave this three stars. So it's about a girl named Sally who's really never had a boyfriend before. She calls herself kind of like the dork and part of like the adorkable. Um, and her best friend is like the athlete at this school really super popular um and they end up fake dating to get everyone kind of off her back to stop setting her up on all these dates to try and get her someone you know it's they end up falling in love there's a cute romance story i i found it was a really quick read i did enjoy it i thought it was fun it's really over the top like with this boy right here um the his name's bex he's like the hot honcho guy but like the girls are like asking him to marry him from like the soccer field he's like throwing his jersey out stuff it was just like over the top and that kind of like got to me but it was a quick it was a funny read and it was cute and I was pleasantly surprised and it was three stars so the next book which is kind of the opposite like that one I had lower expectations for and ended up being a lot better than expected this book I had higher expectations for and I kind of was let down and that is I Killed Zoe Spanos by Kit Frick I do want to say how beautiful this book is. I believe all the first editions came with the blue sprayed edges, which sprayed edges I feel like finding in the United States is really difficult. So I saw this on someone's um, booktube channel that they had gotten an arc of it and hadn't had a chance to read it. But the premise sounded really interesting. Then when I saw it in the bookstore with blue sprayed edges, I knew I had to pick it up. So this is a story about a girl and her name is, I'm trying to remember because I've read this now a long time. Her name is Anna and she is going to nanny for a family down in like the Long Island type area in New York and she remarkably looks identical to or very similar to a girl that had went missing almost a year ago and her name was Zoe Spanos. So obviously that's some red flags right there. Um, and I will, um, this is not a spoiler, but um, two months later, once Anna was there living in there, they do find Zoe's a body and Anna is charged with manslaughter. Um, however, her confession doesn't make sense and there's a lot of holes in it and does not match up with the autopsy results. So this story has goes back and forth between the past leading up to Zoe's disappearance and then it goes to present day with Anna is in um, jail. There is also some podcast elements in this book and that actually was my favorite part of the story was the podcast elements. Um, the things I didn't like about this book... Um, I thought it was slow in the beginning. It definitely got better at towards the end. I didn't, there's really nothing that I did not like about it. I just wasn't totally enthralled with it like I was hoping I was going to. It has a trope in here. I'm not going to mention it because it's like, it will give away part of the book that I don't generally like. So part of that kind of aggravated me because I just don't like that trope in general. But it wasn't a bad book. So I killed Zoe Spanos three stars. All right, my um, other three star book is Darling Rose Gold by Stephanie Robel. So this is a story about a young girl. Her name is Rose Gold and she is telling kind of like her story almost about what happened when her with her mother as growing up. So her mother would poison her and make her sick and they would do fundraisers to get money for her. She would, the mother would shave her head, let her teeth rot. She had to get a um, feeding tube because the da or the mother like made it appear like she wasn't able to gain weight because she would poison her food and throw up. So it's a lot like the Gypsy Rose story if you have heard of that, which was the true base story. So the mom gets released from jail and after only serving five years, which I thought was really kind of weird, 
and they are now reunited and um, so it takes place with before the mother was arrested then afterwards and then how they're dealing with it um because it seems odd because rose gold does pick up her mother from prison and lets her stay with her um it is a weird story um there was something that was mentioned in the beginning of the book that literally made it give it away what the major twist was with after the first like three pages of the book i wish it didn't say that part because i think this book would have been a lot better but I wasn't surprised with the twist because I already thought with why they mentioned something in the beginning gave it away. So that was part that was really disappointing. Also, it's so similar to the Gypsy Rose story, which is a true base story. I understand this is a spinoff of this one, but I wish it just was a little bit more original. I mean, to the point where like Rose Gold likes a thing with Disney characters. Gypsy Rose did. She finds a boyfriend online. She secretly goes on like dating sites. So did uh, Gypsy Rose. So, I mean... I I get it, but like it was like the ending's different. I don't know. I feel like they were too close, but not the same. Either write a book that's almost the same or write something that's completely different. That's just my opinion. However, it was an enjoyable read. I just, I had more, again, high expectations for this than what it actually panned out to be. So those are my three star books for the month of July. Okay, so let's move on to my four star book. So the first one is Slay by Brittany Morris. So this is about our girl here. Her name is Kira. She has created a game called Slay that is like this big fantasy world that's played all around the world. And it is a game for um, black people to play the game, like the virtual world. Um, she created it all on her own, which I love the woman representation of STEM in books. because I feel like it's not talked about that STEM and having females do STEM is something that's talked about. And I think that's really, really important. However, something goes wrong and one of the players of Slay is murdered. And so that's going back now looking at the game of the they're asking if the game is racist because it only lets black people play the game. Um, and she feels that she is responsible for this death. Um, she created the game as a way for that she feel like she could be herself because she goes to a school that's predominantly white people and she feels like she has to put on like a show of a different type of person there. Um, I did love this book. I love the talk about the racial tensions in this book. Um, the, I kind of expected the twist at the end so that was a little bit disappointing. Um, I think why I gave it a four was because I think it's just my personal, I'm not a gamer and a lot of this, like the first like whole chapter is really about like, the gaming in the world. So that just was like kind of boring for me just because I'm not into that stuff. But that's just totally me, nothing to do with the book. But overall, I really did like it. And like I said, the twist was a little bit predictable at the end, which kind of knocked it down for me. But it is a really great book. And I love the STEM representation of a female character in this book. All right, the next four star book is Beneath the Sugar Sky by Shawnee McGuire. So you will see the other books in the series in a minute in my five star um, pile. But this one I did give four stars. The only reason I gave four stars to this one, I believe this is the third one, is that we're introduced to a new, new character named Cora. And there's a lot of attention to her weight in this book and the constant like fat shaming that she does upon herself and that she talks about that it happened in school before and there's this constant reference of her talking about being a bigger girl I don't think it was necessary in the book it did nothing in my opinion to move the plot along I don't think it was needed and I did not like it at all so for me I did drop it a whole point other than that I love the land we go into the, like the sugar confectionery land um which I liked I thought it was really cool like the candy corn farmers and stuff because I'm weird and candy corn's like literally my favorite type of candy which I feel like I'm definitely the minority for that but I just did not like this point of the character constantly talking about being fat I just don't think it added anything to this book at all so I did knock it down to four stars all right the next book that I have is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness this book tore me up because I went in thinking it was something and then it ended up being something completely different. So it's about a boy named Connor who has this monster, which you hear really creepy, shows up at his house um, every day and it's like this nightmare that he keeps li um, living with um, ever since his mother started um, cancer treatments. And the monster is like really weird, like you see right here, it like grow, like something with like the trees, it's super weird. Um, and the drawings in this book are amazing and creepy. Like there's literally in the beginning a whole page dedicated to like toenail. Like it's so weird. Like it's so pretty. I love just the book itself. I think it's so nice. Like look how creepy that is. 
So kind of it reminds me of like um the Christmas a Christmas carol or Christmas story where like the ghost comes and like brings them to like different things and it's kind of like what happens in here. Um I did like the story. I found it super sad. It's not like a happy uplifting book. Um I really did like it. I honestly don't know why I gave it four stars. I read it for a while like <laughs> a while ago. Um, I probably is more like a five star book now that I'm thinking about it, but it is a great book. It is sad. It is, um, it does have trigger warnings for parents of passing and cancer, things like that. It's an emotional read and it's weird and kind of creepy at the same time, but it was pretty good. Let's now move on to the five star books I had for the month of July. So the first one was Kira Cass, The One. I am, I gush over this book. It is my guilty pleasure. I love this first three books of the selection series. So this is the final one that's really kind of stars Maxon and America and Aspen. Um, I just love this story once again. Um, I don't know why I love it so much. I feel like it's like such a YA type book, but I stress about this book stresses me out. I love the love triangle in here. And I just love Maxon and America together and their kind of stressful relationship they have. Um, but this is kind of towards the obviously the end and more of the tensions that are going on in their um, country. And I really like that we really get more of the rebels in this book because the one group of rebels, which I won't say, I really like and I like their teamwork with each other. So this was a five star read for me. All right, the next one was actually the first book I finished this month. So I started the book on a good note, which is Girls of Paper and Fire. In this book, the people are broken down into three different castes. So we have the moon cast, who is like fully demons. They're really the ones that are high prestigious in this kingdom. We have the steel cast, who are half human and half demon. And then we have the paper cast, which is fully human, which are pretty much at the bottom of the totem pole. So what happens every year is the um, king gets paper or girls and they call them the pa uh, girls or paper girls and they are pretty much the king's concubines and it's supposed to be like this really prestigious thing um but our main character gets picked late because they thought one of the king's like soldiers sees her and her really beautiful eyes and brings her into the kingdom however she is not does not want to be there even though it's supposed to be something that's really prestigious and she fights back there also is a female female romance in this book i just loved it, it as a really quick read the world building in this book is so amazing like i had a great picture in my head of what this kingdom looked like and for someone that's not super like familiar with fantasy i think it did a great job at building that and i really understood the book and it was amazing okay my next five star read was a book that literally broke my heart i listened to it as an audio originally and then i had to go buy the book because i loved it so much and it's called monday's not coming by tiffany d jackson if you're looking for a hard-hitting ya contemporary you need to go read this book so our main character his best friend is monday and she, when she comes back from summer with her grandma i believe her best friend monday is they can't she doesn't see her she's not reaching returning her phone calls or texting her back so she thinks it's really odd when school starts she never shows up at school either um she keeps asking everyone like where is monday why you know where is she why can't why isn't she coming to school and kind of everyone just kind of blows her off um there is one teacher in this book that does pursue it and try to see where she is but kind of no one follows through and everyone's kind of let's monday down in the end we do find out where monday is this is a heartbreaking book it's definitely tons of trigger warnings in here for abuse and sexual abuse um and death of family and loved ones but it is an emotional book i like i said listen to audio i do recommend the audio it was super powerful um and yeah so even though it is a longer book um especially for contemporary it's over 400 pages it was just amazing and i definitely will be picking up more of tiffany d jackson soon so my next five star read was the year of the witching by alexis henderson this book is chef's kiss so effing good it is her first novel does not read like a first novel i read this book in one day so this is it's a weird like cross between the handmaid's tale and like the crucible so weird so this is lives in a society where um it's kind of like a cult too and the it's called bethel and the prophet is in charge he is the word of it and so we have our main character emmanuel 
um, who is kind of um, looked down upon in their town because her mother had a relationship with one of the people from the outskirts who were the black people in this town. And after she came back and she was pregnant, she was pretty much disowned and she ran to the woods, which the woods are forbidden because they were known that's where the witches live. Um, she comes back, she tries to kill the prophet. Obviously that doesn't go over well. She ends up dying. So does her father. And so her family is left to shame um, once Emmanuel is born. Um, so in this society, it is seen once you get your period, you're seen as a woman and then the prophet may actually take you as a wife, which is like the most prestigious thing ever. However, she does not want anything to do with that. So this is the story of witchcraft and crazy laws and I literally don't even know how to explain this book. Um, I love the side characters in this book as well. They're amazing and I feel like I'm really not doing a good job at explaining this book but it is so good and actually I tweeted about this book and the author tweeted me back and she said there's a sequel coming along which I'm really excited because the way this ended was like perfect. So it's definitely, like I said, a, The Crucible and The Hayman's Tale crossed together. So if you like either one of those books, I highly suggest The Witching, The Year of the Witching. All right, the next books I'm going to chunk together because it is the graphic novels Heartstopper I finally read and I my third one is out in the living room, I think. I love this series. I feel like everyone knows about them. I was so late to the game of this. But they are so, so good. Oh my god, I cannot wait for the fourth one to come out next year. It is about um, two um, men. There's Charlie and Nick and their relationship um, with becoming a boyfriend and boyfriend and the identity of sexual identity and then eventually um, eating disorders in the later book and how friends and family and students and peers react to their relationship together. It's just such a great book and I feel like it's so realistic. The drawings in here is absolutely amazing. I read these, the second and third one in one day and I just oh. love these. So if you have oh. not read Heartstopper, I highly suggest you pick them up. I'm not even gonna explain what they're about because I feel like it's such, everyone knows about Heartstopper. So my next five star read was my favorite thriller probably of the year so far and that is Riley's Sagers, Home Before Dark. Oh my God, this was so good. So I feel like a lot of people are talking about this on booktube right now because everyone I feel like for the most part have really enjoyed this book. So this is a like a horror um, paranormal type book thriller. So good. So our main character um, had lived in this house that was deemed haunted for I think it's 20 something days when she was five years old when they just abruptly move out her dad writes a memoir about their experience in living in this house um the memoir or the book goes viral goes crazy everybody buys it and they make like a lot of money off of it um but her father passes away and leaves the house to her um, but she wants to see this for herself because she feels like some of it, it may not be true, but she honestly doesn't remember it because she was so young when all of this happened. So this is the story of her going back to the house to see what really is this all about. What's really cool about the book is it's told from present day, but then also there's like excerpts from the exact book. So it's really cool because it's even set up like if it was the book, like instead of having Home Before Dark on the pages, it has the title of the book, which is called House of Horrors. This was a quick read. I loved it. I've heard the audio is fabulous too. Brianna from Books, um, Coffee and Bullet Journals read it in audio and said it was amazing. So if you're an audiobook person, maybe pick up the audio as well. But five star read, best thriller of the year so far. All right, so the next one I'm gonna kind of clump together because they're from the same author and from the same series. And that is Gonna Like Chloe Brown and Take a Hint Danny Brown. So Gonna Like Chloe Brown is the first one in the series and Take a Hint Danny Brown is the second one. They're both by, obviously, Talia Hibbert. I love these books. They are an adult romance book. Uh, I read them, um, like, perfect summer read, vacation read. I read this, this one on vacation. So this first book, our main character, Chloe, has a um, chronically, she's chronically ill and she's kind of put her life on hold until there is a life threatening incident that happens to her and kind of puts her life into um, perspective and she creates a list of things that she wants to accomplish. Um, and some of those things are such as just have like go on vacation with one bag, um, have a wild drunk night out, go camping. Um, and she finds um, a relationship with Red who is 
like the manager of like their apartment complex and he helps out with her and they obviously end up falling in love such a great book this book is literally so funny i actually was like laughing out loud when i was reading it great book so the second book, um, Take a Hint of Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert is Chloe Brown's younger sister. She is the middle sister out of the three Brown sister. There is a younger sister, which will be written, um, will be a book about her, I believe next year. This book is about Danny. She is a English professor going for her PhD. She is bisexual and practices witchcraft. So there's definitely some rep in this book. Um, she is a strong woman. She has, she knows what she wants. Um, and she is in working one day and the fire alarm goes off and she goes into the elevators and she gets stuck. Well, um, she, then the, um, the like security guard comes and rescues her. His name is Zavir. And then it's all over media that they are dating and they play along with it. They fake date because his, um, organization that he does for rugby to help the youth, um, starts getting tons of donations. So they kind of play along to help him out. Obviously it's a fake dating trope. So they end up falling in love. Um, he, I love him. He likes romance novels. He's like a hopeless romantic and I just love him. And he's willing to be the strong independent woman, which bonus points. So five stars each great books go pick them up. <laughs> All right. The next one is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. I feel like I've talked about this book so many times now. The book is about two girls. One lives in New York City. The other one lives in the Dominican Republic. Um, and they actually don't know, but they're actually sisters. They find out once their father has um, crashed um, in an airplane and they end up finding out that they are siblings. So this book deals with grief and it deals with the realization that your father is not who you think he is. Um, it's a really interesting book. I really, really enjoyed it. There is rep in this book as well. And yeah, I feel like everyone knows about this book. So I'm not going to keep rambling on and my books are falling in front of me because I have so many of them. All right. The next book was probably my favorite book I read all month besides maybe the year of the witching. These are tied, but Loveless by Alice Oseman. I went and bought out all of her books after this one. This book was just, I literally read it in one day and it's over 400 pages. So we have our main character, her name is Georgia, and she has just ended her last year of high school and she's never been kissed. Um, she realizes that she's never really been sexually attracted to anybody. And, but when she goes to uni, she said, this is going to change. I want to find, I want to fall in love. Like I want to have love. I see other people falling in love. Um, However, when she is at college or at uni, because I forgot uni, um, she starts to realize that she just can't build those connections that she sees romantic connections with other people. And so she starts to question her identity and her sexual identity. And she learns what asexual and what aromatic means. And she starts really about finding herself and her identity um, and finding love in other ways than having a significant other, perhaps like in her friends. This book was really heartfelt. It was so good. I love the characters in this book. Even minor characters are great in this book. I loved Alice Oseman's writing. So I read through four of her books this um, month because I read those graphic novels by her. But the fact that she's two years younger than me and I'm still in my 20s, that just amazes me how much her, how well she writes. I did order more books of hers because I want all of these books in these really pretty colors. So they should be coming hopefully soon. I read another Elizabeth Acevedo book and I finally read Poet X. So this is a story, I feel like everyone knows this book. This is what Elizabeth Acevedo's, I believe, her first book. It is about a young girl who pretty much lives kind of a rough life and finds her peace and solace in her writing. And eventually she gets um, involved with um, the like slam poetry through school and that really helps her kind of deal with things that are going on. She's realizing that the way that she has grown up is not what she agrees with or believes in or wants for herself and then challenges her parents about that and that obviously does not go over well. There is some um, trigger warnings for child abuse in here but it's a great story. Again it is a verse poetry so it's a quick and easy read. Five stars. All right. The next, they're all chunked together, and it is the Wayward Children series by um, Shani McGuire. So I read the first one as an audiobook, and then I loved it and bought every single one of the books, and I've read all of them this month. Um, I'm not going to go into details about every single one of these books because that would this video is already going to be really, really long, and I don't want to, <laughs> to do that to you. But if you're not familiar with these series, it is about a group of kids 
that have are at a school right now because they all have gone into another type of world like fantasy world there's worlds that make sense that are logic there are worlds that literally things are made of candy there is vampires there is skeletons there is uh candy bugs flying around i don't like each world is so different and i love them so the first book is more of like i feel like an introduction to the whole concept but the books afterwards kind of go back and forth between focusing on just one of the students and then their life prior and in the land before coming to the school and then some of them are about more of all of them what takes place in the present day at the school i really love these books um i'm obsessed with them. i believe there's another one coming out next year and these were my first experience with johnny mcguire again i tweeted her and she retweeted me so it was a really cool month like that so I loved these books if you have not read the wayward children series if you like fantasy and going into different worlds I highly suggest these books <sighs> that was insane that was a lot of books I sorry this video is probably really long I maybe should have done it like a mid and like under the end of the month ones but there we go so let me know how your month of reading went I would love to know how many books you read this month what your favorite books were what your least favorite books post down below and yeah so if you want to take this journey with me um press that subscribe button if you like this video give me a thumbs up and if you don't ever want to miss any of my content press that button and this is video two of my veda which is 31 videos in 31 days so check off another one <laughs> And I will link all my social media down below if you want to follow me, be friends on anything. And yeah, so stay kind, loves, and I'll see you later. Bye.